The FE2 is a 35mm film camera built in the mid 80s um, by Nikon, obviously, and it was what they would class as their advanced semi professional SLR. Um, the actual body is copper aluminium alloy. Yes, I think I remember that right. It's copper aluminium alloy. Um, it's a very solid camera. There's no creaks in it, and this is over 30 years old. It feels really, really solid. It's got a little bit of weight to it. This is my M7, and yeah, my M7 is still a lot heavier than this, and this has a lens on it, and the M7 doesn't. Um, but it's not an uncomfortable weight. It's a quite a good weight. It's a solid weight. It's a nice size. As you can see, it's quite slim. Um, it fits in the hand really well. The FE2 uses a vertical travel focal plane titanium shutter. Yes, I remember that right. Um, and that's part of the reason why this camera can shoot at 4,000 of a second and has a flash sync of 250 of a second. You can actually go all the way down to bulb, or if you want to use the actual dial, it goes down to eight seconds. There's also a manual mode. Um, the manual mode will be 250 of a second. So if the batteries die inside, you can shoot this in full manual, but you'll only get 250 of a second. The cool thing about the FE2, it has a built-in light meter. Now that light meter is powered by two LR44 batteries. Now I'm not sure if those are the correct batteries you're meant to use in this camera, but the LR44s are very easy available in New Zealand and around the world. So that's what I use basically. And they last quite a long time. But like I said, if the batteries die, you can shoot this in full manual, but you'll only have 250 of a second. I'm just going to go through some of the stuff on the camera. Now on the top of the camera you have a rewind lever which we'll talk about that in a minute. You also have a dial here with your ISO or ASA settings on it so you set this to your film speed and away you go. Now this actually goes from believe it or not 12 ISO all the way up to 4000 of ISO. Now to actually operate it you just lift up the dial and you turn it and you can feel it click it's got a nice little positive click twitch lift it up and turn it. There's a little line on the side which you line up with your required ISO um, and away you go. That's as easy as that. On the other side of the dial is your exposure compensation. Now you just push down this little silver button and you turn it to your required exposure compensation basically. It goes to plus two or to negative two. I keep mine around about plus one all the time. That's how I like to shoot my black and white film. On the other side of the prism is the shutter dial. Now this goes from bulb all the way up to 4,000 of a second and now it's marked for 250 of a second in red. Now that is actually your flash sync speed, which is incredibly high for this type of camera. And also has in white M250, which is your manual 250 of a second. So you put it in that when the batteries run out and you can still shoot the camera. It also has an A mode. Now the A mode is full auto mode. So depending on what aperture you're in, the camera will pick your shutter speed. And you can actually see the shutter speed on the left hand side inside the prism when you look through the camera. So that's really nice. You've got a little lever there that goes up and down depending on how you change your aperture. You have your film advance lever, which is here. And at the front, you have a little tiny lever, which you flick that and it will allow you to do double exposures, which I don't normally do, so I don't touch that lever. And there's a little tiny window to tell you how many shots you've taken. That's basically the top of the camera. Now, as I said earlier, this is a really well-made camera. This is absolutely solid. I paid with the lens, a hundred New Zealand dollars for this, which is about 70 US dollars for this complete package. And if you want to get into film photography, this is probably one of the best cameras to get. Like I said, this is over 30 years old and it's still working perfect. The meter is still spot on. I've got no problem, no light leaks, nothing. And it's in really good condition. As I mentioned earlier, there is a rewind lever up here. So you pop that out and you rewind your film. Now, before you do that, you must push in this little tiny button at the bottom, push that in and then rewind your film. Because if you don't, you're gonna just completely destroy your film, okay? So you must pull that in to release the spool on this side so you can rewind it. And then all you do is you just put up the lever and you rewind like that. It's as easy as that. Now to get inside the camera, okay, you have a little tiny black lever here. There's a little lever there. And you flick that lever and you pull up that and pop open it's as easy as that now I will show you how to load the film in a minute but we're just going to finish up the camera first on the bottom you have your battery door now this like I said takes two LR44 batteries that's what I like to use because they're very easy for me to get in New Zealand um, you have a tripod mount on the front you have I think that's a 10 second timer there um, and you have um, a depth of field preview lever and on the other side obviously you have your lens release button 
and there you go that's inside the camera now this takes most f mount lenses all the old manual lenses are fine you cannot use g series lenses or n series lenses on this because you cannot control the aperture from the lens and there's no way of controlling the aperture from the camera now on the back is a little window here now what that is for is that when you open up your box of film like that you tear this part off see that part you tear that off and then you just slide it in the back and it it's a way of you remembering what film you're shooting and what ASA or ISO you need to be on your film. It's just a little bit for that. But I don't actually use those windows to be truthful because I only shoot ISO 400 film and it's black and white. I mean, this is 100 ISO film. That's why it's there because I don't actually use this film. Now, ergonomics of the camera. Now, the nice thing of this camera is when you actually cock the lever like that, it will not advance anymore, you see? So it's already cocked, ready to go to fire the shot. But the nice thing is it actually sits as a thumb rest. See, my hand sits in there like that and it actually helps support the camera. So I rest, I actually rest my thumb like that. So I know I've got the shot. Then when I take the shot, I release it again, pull forward and ready to go. And then take that. So I know I've actually got a shot ready in the camera and my thumb just rests on like that. And I find that quite comfortable. That actually helps support the camera quite a bit. That's a nice part about this. And again, there's no film in there, so don't worry, I'm not wasting film. In the back, you can actually see that honeycomb pattern. That's actually the titanium shutter. Now, that is the reason why this camera can shoot up to 4,000 per second, which is pretty impressive back in the 80s. This was 83, I think, this camera came out. And as you see, it's quite clean inside. Now, whenever you buy a camera, always check inside for mold, dust, and check the back plate. If that's really badly scratched up, it means it's had a really hard life. Now, the viewfinder on this is obviously an optical viewfinder, it's a prism in there. Now, on the left-hand side, you will actually get the shutter speed, and there'll be a needle that goes up and down when you're in auto mode. And then when you pick the shutter speed you want, it will show you on there. There's an aperture window underneath here, which projects the aperture setting on the lens up into the top of the optical viewfinder. Now, this is a very easy camera to focus. It's probably one of the easiest film cameras to focus is a Nikon SLR. It has like a little circle inside with a slit across it. Now, what you do is you line up the two images and then when they're exactly lined up, away you go and take your photo. It's as easy as that. Or, or you can do what I do with my Leicas. You can set up your focus point in there and you can set up your hyperfocal length, which is basically setting up your aperture to around about F11 and put the actual lens on about two meters and anything from around about one meter to four meters will be in focus and then you just go bang take the shot and carry on now to load film this camera is incredibly easy you push a little lever, there's a little black lever there push it pull and open that okay okay take the roll of film you just slide it in like that put it in there you advance it across you line it up there's a little slit in the reel so you put it in just poke it in Okay, so you advance the film across like that, and you just make sure it's nice and tight. You close it up, lock it down, close it like that, and then advance it on, and you're ready to go. It's not hard loading the film on these cameras. A lot of people get scared about that part, but it's really, really easy. So that was just a quick look at the Nikon FE2. I've actually got some more videos on my channel on how I load my film into my tanks without a dark room and also how I develop black and white film in three minutes. So check them out because the links will be down below. And in a few days, there will be a video on how I'm going to be digitalizing my film negatives without a scanner because I've given up of a scanner. I've got a V800 and it just takes too long to scan negatives. So I've got this new way of doing it with a Panasonic G9 and the high res mode from that camera. So remember to subscribe and check out that video when it comes out. But as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon.